will share uh, the, the story about the test strategy uh, in Agile. Uh, and uh, yet, to be honest, I've been in testing for 13 years. Like maybe majority of you, I, I got into testing by, by accident. I actually wanted to be a developer. And then I got to the interview. Uh, well, I, I saw the, the uh, job ad for tester. I was like, well, I'm curious, what could that be? Googled it a bit, uh, decided to apply and started my testing career thinking that I might transition to the developer so, at some point. But yeah, it never happened. Uh, so yeah, after being a tester, then test manager, I, I moved to the um, uh, test architect role. And yeah, since this year, I'm a delivery director. So uh, working for a Dutch company called Levi Knight. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so that is like a new role for me. So I'm looking at, at uh, these uh, testing strategies from, from a bit different uh, perspective. Um, but still, yeah, I consider myself as a tester. So this is the question I've been asking myself a lot. So let's see what are what are the possible answers. Uh, and uh, before we, we start with, with diving uh, deep in, into the topic, I want to share with you uh, my context because I think it, it is it is important for you to understand that the, for, for in which company I work with and uh, uh, how do I collect my how did I collect my, my data for this stock? So I work for a technology service company, uh, meaning that we don't have a product. Uh, we have uh, at the moment sixty five clients, active clients, I believe, uh, with multiple teams working um, per one client, meaning that we have uh, we are working on quite a complex uh, product. Uh, and yeah, we as a service company are client or, or oriented. So yeah, we want to make our clients happy, but we also want to have our people happy. Um, and uh, me personally, I stopped counting at a certain point of time, but um, I think that I worked uh, on approximately 30 or even more projects so far in my career, or I was involved in them. So maybe not actively working, but at least supporting my colleagues. Uh, and some of them were startups, some some of them were big enterprise companies. So I've been through a lot. Uh, and um, when I was uh, creating the, this um, presentation, I, I was still a, a, a test architect and I had the, my own uh, testing department uh, with uh, approximately 20 people. And those 20 testers were working on different projects per different client, meaning that um, I was able to uh, support them and work with them uh, on, on a multiple projects uh, at the same time. And the now situation is a bit different because I have the whole unit, so not only testers, but also developers, uh, DevOps, uh, and, and uh, all the, the roles needed to, to create a, a good uh, and performing teams. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but still, I have that uh, one testing department. Um, and how I collected data, data for this talk and how the actual idea came to my mind is that a few years ago, I, I got the, the assignment to define a test strategy for a client that, that um, we were already worked with. Uh, and uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, I will do that. But why don't we have a strategy for, for this client? Uh, and then I realized that, oops, it seems like we have we are lacking a test strategy on a number of our accounts. So that is quite strange because sometimes you think that, yeah, this should be like a mandatory thing to have. Uh, but apparently it wasn't. And then I realized that we lack strategies on some projects and started thinking about when did we lose that uh, like uh, um, thing that, that it's really common to, to start from the test strategy and then continue to the test planning and everything else. So I recall the times when I started with my career uh, it was in the waterfall era, uh, and uh, then I was thinking about the project back then that we were defining strategy for all of them, uh, and started thinking about different assignments and, and projects that I had after that. So I would say that, that I collected information from uh, more than uh, ten projects. Some of them are still active. Some for some of them we are still still um, for some of the, those are clients we are still working. Um, for some, we have uh, stopped uh, the, the cooperation. And that is when I realized that we can actually uh, have different variations of the test strategy that, that we are providing. Uh, so it could be that um, we have one variation and then we will combine them on depending on, on, on the, the actual assignment, on the actual project client. 
stakeholders, business requirements, uh, we will need to have our own variation. And in this presentation, I will share with you six variation uh, of the different assignments that I've been involved with, uh, and therefore different flavors of the test strategy. But yeah, let's start with the waterfall. Um, of course, the first thing that nowadays that might might pop to your mind could be, yeah, but water working is waterfall was dull and boring and writing those big, big test strategy documents. Oof, it was really struggle to write it. And then most probably no one ever read it completely, maybe just the parts. And yeah, so it's not. Not everything is bad with, with waterfall, uh, the way of working and also the, the, the waterfall uh, like um, idea about writing test strategy. It's good thing is that we started each of the project with the defining test strategy. It gave us the idea, the common understanding, uh, and we were thinking up front and planning our activities, our time, identifying what do we need to do, what is important and so on. Somehow in Agile, we lost uh, the habit to actually stop for a while, think, and then move forward. Uh, and yeah, just uh, maybe a fun fact, this is actually the, one of the waterfalls in Serbia. So Serbia is a really nice country. And in case that you have not been there, come and visit. Maybe not these days because we have like quite bad COVID numbers, but it will be better soon. Uh, and uh, this is the, the example, uh, I think that some of you will recognize it. Uh, this is the TMAP uh, template, um, actually for test plan. Uh, and there uh, you had uh, like a section for, for, for the test strategy where you defined it. And uh, what is interesting, if you take a look at this uh, template, it actually contains uh, 16 pages. So that's only template without any data in it. Uh, when I was working with this template, it can easily get, like when you fill it in with the data, it can easily get to 40 to 50 pages, maybe even more. To be honest, for me, it was not that much uh, of an interesting thing to actually write and to fill in the template. Um, but uh, that was somehow like you needed to format everything that it looks nice uh, and so on. But the interesting and fun part was to find the information to, to put uh, in the template. Uh, I didn't like that, that yeah, I, I had like a framework in which uh, I need to work on. Um, somehow it didn't feel like enough of the, of the freedom, uh, but still uh, I don't consider this as boring thing to do. And if we fast forward to Agile, as I mentioned, we are constantly running to release something to be faster, faster. We have our release trains, or we are running to finish the sprints because especially from the testing perspective, everything piles up at the end of the sprint. And we don't take time to pause, to think about the vision, about the strategy, about what, why, and eventually how. We, we just jump into how. And this is the first uh, actually example that I will share if, if we uh, don't, don't look at the, the waterfall because that was just the template and it was not like a concrete assignment. As I mentioned, um, uh, I'm going to walk you through this uh, presentation through some of the uh, examples and different assignments that, that I was involved with that resulted in different uh, shapes and form of, of the test strategy. So the first assignment, let's call it the isolated assignment, because I was doing only the test strategy, and that was my, that was my mission, uh, was the actually uh, the the one that triggered the uh, uh, this talk and the idea about this talk. Uh, it was um, a client for for whom we still uh, we still still uh, are working uh, successfully. Uh, it happened a couple of years ago uh, when. They uh, called me and asked to do and to define the test strategy. Uh, they didn't have structured testing. Uh, they had uh, distributed teams. Um, majority of the development teams were on our end, 
uh, but they also had um, some of the, the teams working uh, on their end. Actually, it was another vendor that, that, uh, that they were using. So it was, we at Levi9 ha had our own way of working, the other vendor had, had their way of working, um, and teams were fighting on how to test. Everyone had their, their own thoughts and ideas, and everyone was really thinking that they were right and the others don't have um, enough experience to, to decide. So it was, I must say, a complete mess. Uh, the problem for, for, for our client was that they didn't understand the vision of testing because everything was done like ad hoc. Uh, and, and for them, it was really uh, important to actually put it uh, stable and, and to define the test strategy. So I started with the assignment by collecting feedback from different uh, teams and different team members. So of course I interviewed and I talked with testers, but I also talked with developers uh, about the um, DevOps. Uh, I of course talked with uh, business representatives. Um, I even uh, discussed it with the CEO. How does he see uh, the, the product that we are building and so on? And of course I talked with uh, with the other teams from from uh, the other vendor uh, to make sure that I also understand th their point of view. And this is what we ended up with. So this is this is again uh, uh, the uh, table of content for the for the strategy that I, that I provided, but it was hard for me to extract just just one thing. Uh, so I didn't create a 40 page document like in the waterfall, but it was still quite a large document with 20 pages, as you can see. Uh, and um, it concluded a couple of uh, important things. So we started with the uh, goals and the objectives of the test strategy, then explained the testing framework in which we are working, uh, meaning that we explained the, how, how we are covering each test level, uh, which test types do we use, uh, scope of the strategy and the environment. And then uh, the approach, test approach was defined, uh, meaning which test techniques, tools, frameworks, uh, how are we going? Uh, how are we uh, doing the exploratory testing, regression, smoke, test automation, performance monitoring, so on and so on. And uh, at the end, there were like a main conclusion uh, about the current state and what are the recommendations. Uh, the appendix, appendix part, part was actually a part where where I decided to put uh, like the glossary. In, like, for example, like ICTQB have, have its own glossary, something like that, uh, because I realized that uh, when we talk about certain testing um, terms, uh, we might use the same um, words, but we don't mean the same. Uh, and, and try it with, uh, like if you, if you ask uh, someone to explain you the integration testing, usually that is something that, that, that we don't, uh, uh, maybe understand each other at, at the same um, level of details. We might uh, consider it uh, from a different perspective and so on. And just to make sure that uh, both uh, business uh, and development are understanding it uh, in the same way, uh, I just added their uh, glossary to make sure uh, that we are on the same page. And the interesting thing is that um, what we what we did here is that we identified some of the metrics that we might use to, to make sure that there is some progress. Uh, and the metrics was not about a um, uh, number of bugs that were reported or it was not about the velocity of the teams. Uh, it was about uh, one of the pain points for, for this client was actually that their regression testing was, was taking too much time. Uh, they were testing for days, I believe uh, two or three days. Um, uh, they, they needed two or three days for the regression testing to take place each time before they're actually released some, uh, they're releasing something. Uh, and it was not uh, too many days. It was two days that... Uh, uh, all testers, and there were like five to six testers, were, were just doing the regression testing, not nothing else. Mm, what I got as a feedback after six months is that uh, they managed to re reduce it to just half of a working day. Uh, and that was quite a success for them. I could see that they're happy. Uh, but what they also um, shared is that 
uh, they increased confidence in the quality. Uh, and that was one really important thing that I think that each strategy can bring you. You might not reduce your uh, release time, but I'm sure that it will increase the confidence uh, in the testing itself, but also in the quality of the application that you are delivering. So that was the second uh, flavor or, or, or the variation. Now, the third one, um, third type of the assignment. A um, couple of months passed by after, after the uh, test strategy defined for, for the previous uh, client, and I was thinking about what could be now the, the, the interesting thing for me to do regarding the test strategy. Uh, and um, we had an um, uh, interesting request. Uh, it was from um, uh, one uh, client that uh, we were not working with before. Uh, they came to us for the second opinion, how they call it, uh, to do the architecture assessment. So one part of, of, of the architecture assessment, so besides uh, assessing the architecture, infrastructure, pipelines, everything. Uh, it was, uh, of course, to assess the testing and the processes, the way of working. But I was so happy for this assignment because I was able to work with my dear colleagues. So we had one Java software architect, one DevOps architect, uh, and one solution architect. So the four of us were actually uh, looking at uh, looking at uh, the, the, the the solution um, that um, this client had uh, and giving our uh, thoughts about it. Uh, they have a couple of criteria for the assessment. Uh, uh, it was about scalability, about um, performance, and about reliability. And for me, this was really uh, the best and the most fun experience because I learned a lot. Um, we were looking at the code, we were doing the interviews with business people, with developers, with architects, with testers, with uh, product owners. We were inspecting pipelines, we were looking infrastructure as a code, not only the production code, and so on. So it was really, really interesting. Uh, and this is when I realized that you can never do the testing uh, assessment or writing of the test strategy like in isolation. You must look at um, all of the other aspects, and I will share with you which aspects I believe that you should take into consideration later. This is the test strategy that we provided to, to our client. And since this was the architectural assessment uh, that they um, requested us uh, to do and uh, asked to, to um, do some, uh, some kind of um, um, assessment based on the criteria I already um, shared, uh, we set up the test strategy in the form of the recommendations. If here I use like the same template that I did uh, shared uh, on the on the um, two slides ago, um, then if the test strategy was about twenty pages, then the whole assessment document would have like one hundred pages, so it would not be like an easy thing to read and understand. Uh, instead, we decided to be quite concrete. Uh, and to, uh, as I said, uh, put it in, in the shape of, of the recommendations. So we were looking at the different test aspects, uh, uh, explaining current state and recommendation, where do we um, want to be uh, in, uh, in the future. Uh, and uh, this was on two to three, I believe three pages uh, um, along regarding the testing. So, for example, one of the things, of course, uh, the, the here uh, the table is a bit anonymized, so uh, you, you will not see all the data, but you can get the idea about the document itself. So, for example, for the unit testing, we realized that the test coverage was 30% uh, on the back-end projects and that we are aiming at least 70% uh, uh, on, on the code coverage on the unit level. Or, for example, I will not read it all, you will have it uh, in, in the presentation so you can take a look. Uh, for example, for the acceptance testing, um, uh, we realized that there is no formal business sign off uh, and our recommendation was uh, that uh, it, it needs to be included as a mechanism to ensure uh, that the features are meeting business uh, needs. Uh, or for example, for the performance testing, um, there were a few 
uh, performance test, but there was no clear performance testing strategy. Um, and then we, we shared that it would be good to have a separate performance uh, testing environment that is production-like to define a list of the mostly used business flows that will be covered with scripts uh, and uh, the usage of the load generator uh, to agree on the wanted loads and metrics up front um, and to start with performance tests regularly uh, and then define a detailed uh, plan for performance testing. Fourth situation, I believe. Um, thinking about different uh, situations, different uh, clients or stakeholders I was involved with, uh, I realized that uh, uh, there is a different variation. So if you're looking working with a technical client, so if you're hi hired by, um, or if you're working for a company uh, that is like true IT company, uh, and um, uh, everyone uh, there are quite uh, technical, uh, then you can approach this uh, creation of the test strategy a bit differently. Uh, so variation of the test strategy can also be uh, because of, of, of the, the, the one, uh, the, the, the person that you're sending your uh, the test strategies or documents to especially if the person is not only uh, technical, but also has a lot of the domain knowledge. And one of these um, projects, I actually decided to go with a test strategy in the form of the mind map. So I couldn't use the, the, the real mind map there. So I made like quite a simple one um, just for the sake of the example. Uh, the, the actual mind map was uh, much bigger, but here it was important that we put everything on one map to make sure that uh, whenever we take a look at it, uh, uh, we are all on the same page and we can remind ourselves what are we focusing on. Uh, and for example, uh, what we put there is that for the functional testing, we are mainly doing exploratory testing. Uh, and what is important there is that we attach the, the, the exploratory testing notes after each session to the appropriate uh, JIRA tickets or stories. Regarding the automated testing, uh, unit test coverage uh, should be 80%, 85% uh, and integration tests are part of the continuous integration uh, and there is no uh, environment needed. For example, uh, we will be using uh, uh, in-memory database uh, or mocks, so we will not be uh, needed the, the environment for the, for the integration test nor for the unit test. So for the UI test, we are going to cover the basic flows. Uh, and as you can see on, on, on the right, there is actually uh, a goal with the note attached. There was uh, explained what is the goal of the strategy and what do we want to accomplish. Most challenging one was when you, you are working directly with a C-level person and when you want to share and explain your test strategy uh, to someone at the C-level. Uh, Many, many years ago, uh, I was involved uh, in quite an interesting uh, project uh, that, uh, that was about the uh, smart homes, uh, automation and everything. So it was really fun to, to play with all these uh, switches, sensors and everything. Uh, and uh, we were working for um, uh, one guy who was a, a CEO of the company uh, that he founded. Uh, and uh, it was actually a small startup that was more in the form of the uh, R&D, uh, of course, company. Uh, and usually how it goes with the majority of my assignments that I was involved with, um, our uh, development teams are talking with either product owners or engineering manager uh, or product manager or, or project manager, but our teams are rarely talking directly with the CEO when it comes to the requirements. And here it was not, he was not giving us like the functional requirements. He, were, he was um, sharing like the vision uh, and, and the roadmap for the product that he, he, he saw. Uh, mostly it was about fast feedback. So we uh, think of uh, functionality, we implemented the demo it to him and then he says yes or no. Usually he changes his mind completely and then we start, start building something new from scratch. But one day uh, we had a meeting and he asked me, Okay, Mirena, you're a tester here, you're 
allocated 100% uh, on, on this uh, project and on a team that is quite small. So what do you do for that uh, four hours per week? And I was like, hmm, what do I do? It's not like I didn't know what, I, what I'm doing, but uh, it's more like how to explain because for you it's completely yeah, clear what you're doing, but for when you need to explain it to someone, especially like a CEO, then it's, it's not like an easy thing to do. So I was thinking how to actually explain it to him. And I decided that I actually share my test strategy and then go into the details. Uh, and how to send a test strategy to a CEO. It's not like you're not going to send the person uh, like a 20 page long document or, 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 or a, well, you could share mind map, but uh, maybe it would be better to actually explain some things, but on the level of details that, that uh, the person at, at that level requires. Uh, so I decided to write an email. I was making sure that that email actually uh, can fit uh, the, 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 the screen of your one screen of, of the mobile phone because, uh, yeah, high management uh, roles, they don't want like to scroll the emails if it is too long, they are not going to read it. And here is what, what, I, what I explained there. Um, uh, the, I first explained the goal of the test strategy is to make time to release the production shorter and to increase the trust in the quality. Uh, to achieve this goal, we are going to use automated tests uh, that are going to cover business critical scenarios and use them to validate each new feature, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, along with automation, we will use a well-known technique, exploratory testing to include our critical thinking about the product under test. Both functional and performance testing is going to execute it, and secu uh, security testing um, will be conducted uh, before each feature release. Uh, and then I just explained that teams are going to use uh, Scrum. Um, what, what is the definition of done to make sure that he understands that we are um, really taking care that both functional and performance requirements are met. Uh, and the uh, important thing for him could be that we are going to write business uh, facing tests uh, uh, that are human readable um, and that are going to be executed uh, uh, and after each run uh, he or, or someone else from the product team would be able to see uh, the results on the dashboard. I didn't go into details like you saw on some of the previous examples like the unit test coverage, like um, automation on a different testing level, uh, explaining some other details. Um, here it was quite uh, high level, uh, explaining things that I was um, thinking that uh, is relevant. Uh, what I, uh, I I think uh, that I managed to, to su succeed with this email is to explain that the role itself was complex. So it's not that we just I just uh, click around and, and test it for a couple of minutes and say, yeah, it's okay. Uh, that it, it requires uh, a lot of uh, thinking, planning, and uh, different activities. Last but not the least is the trustful client or trustful business. If you have a great relationship with, with your uh, client or business, so if you're looking for, if you're working for a product company, then you don't have the client, you have your business representatives and managers. Um, uh, if you're working together for a long time, if you all think alike, you can easily put your test strategy on a Confluence page just with a couple of bullets. It's also okay not to create anything or just to put a couple of post-its on the wall in the office when you're working from the office. Important thing is that we all have and share the same vision. Uh, I believe that it is really a good idea to actually write down uh, at least the most important things about the test strategy because we are all um, a human envelopes, meaning that the, the amount of information that we are able to uh, uh, remember is limited. Uh, and even if it seems, yeah, we will never forget it, of course, it's obvious. Well, we tend to forget. Um, so it's better to, to put it in some kind of a shape or form. You can choose your own, um, but still, as I said, it's still okay to create nothing as long as you have the, the actual discussion about the test strategy and make sure that you're all on the same page. 
And I would like to share some of the conclusions that, that, that I uh, then had uh, after analyzing all of these different uh, situations and flavors of the test strategy. Uh, this is not the end of the presentation, so bear with me. I just like to make the conclusions quite long. I believe that each test strategy must be tailor-made. Uh, I will not use the, the word, word uh, must uh, that uh, many times, maybe two times uh, in, in, in this presentation, uh, but uh, this is for me a must. It's like a dress or a suit. You can go to uh, like a commercial store like Zara, H&M, something similar and buy either a dress or a suit, whatever you prefer. It will fit you okay, nice. Uh, but if you go to the tailor and then they measure all, all the relevant parts of your body, uh, then that suit or dress will, will fit you differently and uh, like we love. And you will feel different. Same goes for the test strategy. You have a lot of templates. Templates are like going and getting the, the, the clothes for Ron Zara. But uh, templates are just what someone else thought that it is important. But it's your test strategy. It's not theirs. It's your context. It's not theirs. That is why I started this presentation with the context in which I work. That you understand how I got the conclusions. If I were just explaining all of this, you could easily think that it was just something that I realized after working for after developing one one same product or, or working with the same um, people and so on. Context is important, uh, but also product that you're building. And there are so many factors that uh, are important for you and that define your test strategy that it's hard to get a template that will fit all. And, 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 and template is something, you know, I don't know how it is called the, with, with the horses that they have here, uh, like ne next to their um, eyes, so they cannot look uh, aside. They must only look at the road. When you give me template, this is how I feel. And I could easily miss something that is just right next to me because I don't see it. I'm looking at the template and trying to fill it in the best that I can. Uh, this strategy should be should be beneficial for both both business and development. You, you are not creating test strategy for your test team. You're not creating test strategy for your development team. You're not creating test strategy for your business only. You're creating the strategy for everyone. So agree with the business about, um, explain them, make sure that uh, they also give like a sign off to the strategy, but also explain it to your developers, explain it to the testers, uh, that is the only way to make testing vi viral. And I believe that um, test strategy is helping us to actually explain what do we do and how complex our work is always. I, I was thinking of saying it can sometimes be, but I think that it, it's always complex. And each strategy okay. must, and this is the second time that I will use must, uh, have a goal. Why we are doing this. What do we want to accomplish? It is like in life, in real life. So if you are, for example, going um, on a hike, you can go um, to hike uh, with the goal to just be in the nature because you're sitting all day in front of the computer um, and you just want to be outside in the woods breathing fresh air. Or you can have a goal to, to, to climb like the highest mountain peak. Uh, Depending on the goal, you will bring different hiking gear, so different shoes. Dif you will have a, like a backpack if you're climbing the peak. You will have a lot of water, food, like a raincoat, uh, sun cream, hat, uh, who knows what else. Uh, but if you're going just hiking in the woods that is next to your house, you can easily go out dressed the, the same li like you're in the house. And Maybe in that kind of a hike or a walk, you, you will take um, uh, also small kids or maybe like a really small dog. Um, but if you're going like to, to, to really climb that high mountain peak, 
then most probably you will consider not taking it. I'm not saying that you will not take them, um, but you will think about whether whether I should take them or not, whether I should uh, like take my, my small dog that is not used to, to that much of, of um, running and flipping. Those are all the things that will tailor your strategy towards this activity of walking or hiking, depending on the goal. Same goes with the strategy. And the, the goal for the strategy is not a question to you as a test manager, test architect, tester that is writing the test strategy. It is the question to all, and it is the ultimate question, I would say. Important thing is to know your audience. It is actually good advice for anything. It is good advice when you're doing the presentation. So for example, it's really hard for me because I don't know my audience right now. I have no idea uh, how many of you are actually listening to this presentation, how many of you are actually, I don't know, cooking, eating lunch, playing around uh, with your kids or pets, watching a movie maybe if this is not interesting, or going through your emails. If we were at a live conference, I would know my audience better. Same goes for the test strategy. To whom you are going to send the strategy, as you can, as you can recall the, the example from a few minutes ago, if you're going to send the strategy to the uh, CEO, then the, it might uh, look a bit different. Or if you know that the CEO person is going to read your 20 page long test strategy, you're going to put there at least the executive summary. Uh, it's not about who, it's about the level of their technical knowledge, it's about the, their, their knowledge about the domain and everything else. The thing that we often tend to forget is that test strategies do not explain what testers do. It's not about uh, only test activity, activities that, are, uh, that testers execute. Uh, test strategies should contain all testing activities, no matter who does it. Usually developers write unit tests, but you should put it there. Uh, maybe testers are not taking care of the um, uh, environment. Maybe uh, developers, are, 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 maybe DevOps guys uh, are the ones who, who are sh making sure that the environment is stable. But still, you must put there the requirements for the, for the environment itself. Or if you think that you should include the static code analysis, um, it is considered somehow a developer tool, uh, but it's also um, a good a good thing to include in your test strategy because at the end it is about testing. And now the slide uh, that I uh, actually uh, mentioned uh, is um, what can you look at and what I think is a good idea to actually look at and consider while you're uh, defining your test strategy. And, and I found out this uh, really nice uh, visualization uh, in the Lean Enterprise book uh, that is really, really nice, interesting and good book to read if you haven't. Uh, so uh, it's about, so for example, as, as you can recall uh, my example about the archi uh, architectural uh, assessment, uh, then uh, where we analyze everything, code, architecture, um, deployment pipelines, infrastructure, testing, way of working, um, how requirements are defined, everything. Uh, you should consider all of that. So for example, it is not the same if you have a, a release frequency of once in every 100 days, or if you're having a daily releases your test strategy is going to be different. Branching model can also uh, influence that. So if you're following a Git flow or if you have uh, like a release branch, your test strategy is going to be different. Do you have a separate QA department that is waiting for a piece of software to be done and then test it? Or do you have uh, your testers integrated uh, into the uh, development teams? Architecture, is it a microservice architecture or is it a big monolith, for example? If you have the microservice architecture, then if you change something in one microservice, most probably you're going to test only that microservice. I'm saying most probably because in some cases you, you're going to test also the others that integrate with that one. But when you have a big monolith, then 
it's harder to, to actually isolate only the, the piece of, of, of the code and the software that you're going to test. Releases, it's not, not only how often do you release, but how do you release? Do, do you have the release train? Uh, do you use green, uh, uh, blue green deployment canary releases? Um, infrastructure, do you have production like environment? How do the environment look like? Are you using cloud or is everything on premise? Uh, do you have enough of the budget to actually um, have testing environment on cloud or do you need to create your own virtual machines and test it that way? Uh, or you will use, I don't know, Docker and Kubernetes and, and, and run everything on your machine. So it is like a whole variety of the current context in which you're living, in which your product that you're building lives in. And it's not only about the current state, it is also about the future plan. So if you know that now you're releasing every 100 days, and you know that the goal is in three months to go to uh, one release every 10 days, maybe it's a bit optimistic plan, but let's use it for the sake of the presentation, then yeah, of course that you're going to include that um, in, in your um, test strategy. If you don't have a test strategy at the beginning uh, of the project, uh, then first, when you realize that you don't have it, do the assessment of the current state, where we are, where do we want to be, uh, include all of this uh, that, that is in this slide, maybe think about something else um, and make sure that you cover it all. Don't forget to ask questions, don't jump in into writing test strategy uh, because you know it all. No, take your time, ask questions, find out everything that I spoke before, and then um, write the text. The easiest thing is actually to write. When you have enough of the information, the easiest thing is to write. And the fun part is actually to find out what do you want to put in the strategy. Not only test strategy, and strategy. Yeah, in Agile, things are changing fast. We all know that. Nothing is set in stone, so not even our test strategy. It shouldn't be. Uh, I'm not advising you to change the strategy like on a daily basis. Uh, but for example, if you decide that you're going to include, uh, to introduce feature toggles and you're working into implementing feature toggles, your strategy might change, right? So make sure that you constantly revise and iterate your test strategy. Don't wait for someone else to write, uh, to ask you to, to write the test strategy. Uh, you know that the, the, the most uh, common excuse is, well, no one asked me to write a test strategy. That is the reason why we don't have a test strategy. Or another related time, I didn't have time to write a test strategy. You know I'm always busy. Uh, do they explicitly ask you, Test this feature, please. No, that is your job. Like testing a feature is your job, so is writing the test strategy. And finally, yeah, we are approaching um, the, the end of this presentation with the, with the famous question, what to put in the strategy. There is no recipe, uh, but I will try to mention all of the ingredients. Mandatory is the goal and the approach explained. So for example, if you're working in Scrum, then you will uh, explain that you start with the detailed requirements, then you do uh, what do you do uh, testing related in the design and analysis, then uh, implementation and development testing, acceptance testing, deployment, and so on. For example, uh, you should also think about the scope, testing on different levels, unit integration systems, so on and approaches to exploratory testing, regression testing, test automation, security testing, smoke testing, performance testing, security testing, so on, so on, so on. Team organization, do you plan to have like a dedicated QA team? Do you wanna have your uh, QAers or testers uh, part of, of the um, development team? Do you plan to have testers at all or everyone will test and you will have just a test coach? About the test environments that you wanna use, how do you, do you plan to use them? And of course about the tooling. Uh, so tools uh, are important. It's a good thing to try to have it somehow uniform and unified uh, across the project, but it's not like you can use only one tool, but 
then from my experience, it's not good like to use 10 different tools and each team is using their own tools. So, so in case then of the maintenance or changing some priorities, it is true health, maintaining everything. So try to be optimal. Uh, or maybe you, you have some special hardware needs uh, and so on. So you know your domain, you know your context, think about everything that is important there and uh, please include it in the test strategy. Some of the final advices. Uh, uh, be sure that you understand which questions are for you as the one who is writing the test strategy and which questions are for others. Um, you are not uh, obligated to answer all of the questions. Some of the questions you can answer, but uh, most probably you're the one that would be asking questions and then based on the answers, you, you will decide on the direction. Define the test strategy together with the business, not just with the development team. It's, I consider test strategy as a collaboration tool and I would like that you get this out of this talk. So it's not about the document. It's not about the, the visualization of the strategy. It's about the discussion it brings. It's about different people with different backgrounds and impact of the product sitting together and discussing why are we doing testing? What do we want to accomplish? How are we going to improve? It gives the wide perspective to everyone. Uh, for testers uh, to propose the way of working, for business to understand the value and what testers do. Um, when, you, when you define the test strategy, it is a good thing to have like a presentation with highlights to explain that, to discuss and then to share the document in case that you have it. And my personal goal that I want to share with you is that I want to have the test strategy on all of my projects. Hopefully, uh, I will manage. I'm not there yet, but I will I will try. I have, I have a vision how am I going to do that. Final thoughts. If we don't have strategy, we'll be lost. I truly believe that. Uh, team members will not understand what they're supposed to do, what's expected from them. And uh, uh, others will not understand testers. Whole team approach to define and implement strategy. Don't do it in is isolation. Uh, ask the others. Sometimes it's hard to get like the consensus, but you must try. And I'm sure that at the end you will. And maybe the most important thing is test strategy is a living document. Everything is a living document. Don't just create it and put it somewhere like in the corner uh, and forget about it. Evaluate, iterate, uh, and make sure that it matches your current context. That is it. I believe that I talked maybe three minutes more than I was supposed to, but any questions? It's a living presentation. Nicely done. Um, we've got a couple out there. Um, I'm going to start with the first question that I had. Um, as you were talking, I want to dive into risk a little bit more. Listening to your talk, it sounds like there's a couple options. One, let's have an example. Let's say test data quality is an issue in, in the environment. And so that becomes a risk on some of your approaches or resources. Yes, we'd like to do all this, but they're in the middle of a merger and therefore resources become um, maybe questionable as the project and, you know, uh, things evolve. Do you find it's better to define the risks, like solve them, and then talk in the test strategy how you're going to mitigate those risks? Or do you think risk coverage in the test strategy is appropriate? Or to your point, everything is customizable. I'm just looking for your experience. Where do you see this more fitting? I would say that, yeah, yeah, it is, it is uh, customizable. Uh, so I, I see risks um, are, are maybe um, more um, uh, appropriate to put in the test plan because once you have the strategy, then, then you go to the actual planning phase. So you know where do you want to go uh, and now let's define how are we going to get there. Got and it. we have our, our, our framework of work. And then you have a different risks associated with, 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 uh, with, with the, the approach that, that you're then um, uh, explaining in details in your test planning. Uh, but on the other hand, I agree that risks are important uh, and that we must think about them. Uh, it's, it's good to mention that, but what could be then the risks to the test strategy? Uh, 
uh, it's that uh, maybe business will not understand that we will not have enough budget and so on to do so. Uh, but uh, risks are usually associated uh, either that we are not going to finish something on time or we will not have enough money to do so. So it's then related to the planning itself rather than the strategy and the vision. Uh, it's like uh, when you have a, have a, your private business uh, and uh, you have like a small shop uh, uh, that is selling, I don't know, bird food. Uh, and then uh, you have the strategy uh, that you want to go, for example, online. Uh, then uh, you will include the risks in, the, your, in your planning. How do you want to, to, to get there and what would be like the milestones to get there? Got it. Thank you. Um, Kelly asked a question, and I'll summarize it here. When there's several projects running in parallel, where's the breakdown from a strategy perspective? Is it by department? Is it by program? If there's multiple projects running under one program, each project gets their own test strategy. Can you break that down a little bit, um, what you found to be yeah. a helpful approach? Oh, that, that is really good. Good one. Thank you. Um, I would say it, it depends on the project itself. Uh, and um, if the uh, if the projects are somehow correlated, then we can we can have one test strategy. It would be better to have one test strategy if somehow they, they are correlated. If the projects are completely different, uh, then I would say it makes sense also to create a different um, testing strategies from them for them because uh, yeah they they all all then live in their own uh, microspace and then of course include all of the departments that are um, part. Uh, part of, of the project. I, I don't think that it is necessarily to necessary to to include everyone uh, uh, from the product project portfolio. Um, you can have a couple of business representatives uh, because if you like try to get them all in the same room, you will never get get the consensus. And especially if those are like the people with, with stronger. Uh, statements about things that it is not their expertise but you must get the, like the inputs from them uh, and then make sure that uh, the ones who are going to execute the strategy later on through a test plan um, or, um, or or the ones uh, who are actually um, in charge for, for the product progress quality uh, are, are involved. 